this is the hard thing about solving the problem of life, I think, is how many things you have to integrate into building a sort of a a, a unified picture of this thing that we want to call life. And, and a lot of our theories of physics are built on um, building deep regularities that explain a really broad class of phenomena. And I think we haven't really traditionally thought about life that way. Uh, but I think to get a, at some of these hardest questions, like looking for life on other planets or the origin of life, you really have to think about it that way. Mm -hmm. And so most of like my professional work is just trying to understand like every single thing on this planet that might be an example of life, which is pretty much everything. And then trying to figure out like what's the deeper structure underlying that. Yeah. Schrodinger wrote that living matter, while not alluding the laws of physics as established up to date, is likely to involve other laws of physics hitherto unknown. So to him, I love that quote. There was a sense that at the bottom of this are new laws of physics that could explain this yeah. thing that we call life. Yeah. Schrodinger really tried to do what physicists try to do. Uh, which is explain things. Um, and he, his attempt was to try to explain life in terms of non-equilibrium physics because he thought that was the best description that we could generate at the time. And so he did come up with something really insightful, which was to predict the structure of DNA as an aperiodic crystal. Um, and that was for a very precise re reason that, you know, that was the only kind of physical structure that could encode enough information to actually specify a cell. We knew some things about genes, but not about DNA and its actual structure when he proposed that. But in the book, he tried to explain life as kind of going against entropy. And so some people have talked about it as like Schrodinger's paradox. How can life persist when the second law of thermodynamics is there? Um, but in open systems, that's not so problematic. And really the question is, why can life generate so much order? And we don't have a physics to describe that. And it's interesting, you know, generations of physicists have thought about this problem. Oftentimes it's like when people are retiring, they're like, oh, now I can work on life. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> or they're like more senior in their career and they worked on other more traditional problems. And there's still a lot of impetus um, in the physics community to think that non-equilibrium physics will explain life. But I, I think that's not the right approach. Uh, I don't think ultimately the solution to what life is is there. And I don't really think entropy has much to do with it unless it's entirely reformulated. Well, because you have to explain how interesting order, how complexity emerges from the soup. Yes, from randomness. From randomness. Physics currently can't do that. No, 